Good day, my beloved. Welcome to the Bears Gym. Today, Isaiah 54 is our prominent thrust. We might very possibly talk about different sections in the Word of God as we talk about this chapter. But this is our text today. Isaiah 54. I am reading from the King James Bible. And I hope as we cover this chapter, both you and I will learn something good that will feed us, instruct us, correct us, and give us that spiritual depth that God would have us to have from reading his word. Let us begin. Isaiah 54. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. That's kind of an interesting precept. And I kind of see that sometimes. I see, you know, houses with, you know, one woman and really no daddy around, but lots of kids. Very possibly God has allowed them to live in that slightly depraved state of going from one man to another to bless them in contradiction to their own lives that they will have at least somebody there to be with them. Some sort of help meet for them. I don't really know why, but that does seem to be the case. When you have good, godly, married men and women that can't have babies. It's an it's a ununderstandable paradigm to me. But it's a truth to some extent. Verse 2 of Isaiah 54. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Israel in the Old Testament, especially after the time of David and Solomon, and Isaiah, this section of Isaiah is way far after the time of David and Solomon, much has happened in Israel. Some good, a lot bad. Because of their sins, they were overrun by many kingdoms, many tribes, overran them, oppressed them. Because of their wickedness, their failure to obey the word of God. They were chosen as God's people, and yet they were sometimes some of the most wicked, ungrateful, and rebellious people on the earth. We go on. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and thou shalt remember not the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. As you look to the foreign leaders of our respective nations, whatever nation you're coming from, be it India, Russia, Germany, Pakistan, Mexico, Brazil, whatever that country is, you have a leader. How often do these leaders dedicate 
the leadership of their country to the true leader of our world and their country, the Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ. When's the last time one of your rulers or my ruler gave praise to Jesus Christ for his utmost authority to take the reins of our country and lead it. You don't hear that, friend. And if you have a leader of a country that declares that, let me know. Let me know. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Israel was put to the oppressor. And in this last century, probably the greatest oppression of all time has happened to the people of God. First to the, the communist butchers, eventually then to the concentration camps of Hitler. But as this says, for a moment, he rejected them. But now, they're a beautiful, beautiful and prosperous country. And not all Hebrews have devoted themselves to Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, few of them have given homage to Jesus Christ, to Yeshua, as their salvation. And yet, God has blessed them, despite themselves, because the time is now, the time is soon, and the Lord's going to come soon, I believe. I don't know when. Maybe it's the next year, maybe it's the next 10 years, maybe it's the next 100 years. But I'll tell you, God didn't put his people back into the land of Israel and prosper them as he has done at this time in history for no reason. The time is here. The time is now. It is coming. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. The Jewish people have one more great onslaught against them. It's sad to talk about book of Ezekiel, Revelation. Gives us a little insight that there will be a remnant of Israel, those that did not go up in the rapture of the church as Christians, but were left behind. And then discover indeed that Jesus was the Messiah. God will help them survive through the tribulation period, but their nation, their people group as a whole will once again be oppressed throughout the earth. But once restored, it will never happen again. But they have a small time, a very small time of Jacob's trouble is left for them. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of agates, and the gates of thy, of thy beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city. Thy beautiful city. Jerusalem 
is like a glowing city. And they almost can't help it. With all the sunshine and clear skies they have, and the beautiful rocky environment, which I like personally because it's wide open. I like going mountain climbing. I like going soloing up cliffs and stuff. Bears like to do that. I like that. And once you get to the top, if you're in a wide open land to sit on a cliff and look for miles and miles and miles, I like that. And that's what Jerusalem is. Something beautiful and spread out where you can see for miles and miles and miles. Spread unto the city and the carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. When I raised my children, I made sure they heard the word of God every day of their lives. What they do with it now, that's their business. But as a father, as their lay pastor, as their elder, as their facilitator, I made sure that every one of my children that lived in my home heard the word of God every day of their life. They got a hug, they got encouragement, a little, a little pat on the head, maybe a kiss on the cheek. They got a big bear hug, a big squeeze. To the best of my ability, that's what they had. I made sure of it. And it's a beautiful thing because you as a father, or perhaps you're a single mom or a single dad, to have children and to give them the word of God. You've given them the best teaching they can ever have in their life. Because when you send them off to the schools, whether they be Christian schools or secular schools or, or religious schools, whatever they are, they have to filter out what's being fed to them through the doctrinal changes and secularism and so forth. But you as a father, give your children the pure word of God every day of their lives. It will mean something to them one day. Never forget that. Verse 14, in righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. That's huge. That's huge. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Well, We can't really say that's happening right now. Not for Israel and not from the saints of the Lord. We can't really say that. But one day we will. We're in the thousand year reign in the millennium upon the earth where Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning and the saints are ruling and reigning with him as there is a forced code of righteousness upon the earth where the thorns will be turned into blossoming bushes and flower plants and, and it's, the earth is going to explode with goodness during that time. But there will also be a forced rule of righteousness upon the earth. And at that time, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. None. It will be stomped out immediately because you are a child of God. So whether you're a Jew, Gentile, Oriental, Hispanic, African, German, Russian, Pakistani, Filipino, American Indian, South American Indian, people from Peru, Argentina, wherever you are from, as a saint, 
and as a child of Jesus Christ, no weapon formed against you will prosper. But now that's in the future. But now let's talk about the now. And in a sense, as me as a bear, and you have a weapon against me, and you kill me, so what? You have just blessed me into heaven. So in a sense, right now, no weapon formed against me will prosper. And if you are a saint of Jesus Christ, that would apply to you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. God bless you, friend. See you next time.